Out of the side of my eye, I see another bystander talking to the car. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we are going to be telling you a little bit more stories. Before we get started, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so you can continue to see more episodes. So this one brings me back a couple of years. This is a story of mainly me. My patient was very critical. And let me kind of paint the scene here a little bit. It's a rainy early morning. It was kind of fall time. And we have some roads that are curved. And these curves get the leaves that fall on it, the rain that falls on it, and can get very slick. There was this girl that was heading to work with a friend and they come around the curve and lost control. It ended up going off the road, hit a ditch, and flipped her car at least two times. When that happened, the passenger got ejected, landed on a driveway, and then the next flip that happened, the driver got ejected, and the car continued to flip and actually landed on top of her. When I showed up on the scene, she was nowhere to be, to, to be found. So when I showed up, here's what the picture I had. Drive up, put my car in park. I see the car off the side of the road. It's on all four wheels in a dirt area just beyond a driveway. And I see one victim sitting, almost Indian style, in the driveway. I get out, I do a scene assessment. I do a walk around to kind of figure out what's going on. By this time, there are some bystanders that have arrived. They start talking to the patient that's in the driveway. And out of the side of my eye, I see another bystander talking to the car. And, you know, I immediately said to this one, call for more resources. She's alert. She's talking. She's breathing. I'm good with that. I need to see what the other one's going on. So I leave this patient because my partner is, you know, two seconds behind me. He pulls up and ends up taking care of that patient. So I go to my patient and I don't see her. I'm like, who are you talking to the bystander? Bystander, she's under the car. I'm like looking and the car is literally on the ground. It's kind of muddy out. So it kind of sank inside. All four tires are flat and it, this thing's on the ground, almost like one of those low riders that you see riding around the streets in those fancy cars. But this is a standard car, windshields out, doors are kind of smashed in. And then I look down and just beyond the front tire, I see her arm sticking out. I'm like, holy crap. There is a person underneath here, but I go to look and I can't really see her at all. She appears to be face down, her head is tilted, and there's an air pocket that she's breathing in and she's talking at this moment in time. So this is where I thought, okay, I don't have rescue here yet. I don't have anything else. I don't have any really rescue tools because I was a chase car. I'm going to pick this car up. <laughs> and I truly believed at that moment in time, I'm going to pick this, you know, I think it's a Ford Taurus. I don't even remember what it was, but it was a sedan of kind. I thought to myself, I'm just going to pick this thing up and get it off of her. So I went to lift up on the car thinking I was the Hulk and not so much. I was able to get the suspension to come off her and then she was really able to start crying, start talking. So I knew in that moment in time that uh, we had a compression problem. But as long as I held that car up, she was okay. We needed to get her out of there now. Fortunately for me, we have a, a very good police department that works with us. They arrived in their cars. I called them over. Uh, we all kind of started picking up on the car as best we could. You know, we had one, two, I bet four or five cops before the rescue got there trying to pick this car up to get this, this girl out from underneath the car. We even got to the point where we tried to shovel for some leverage. We found some debris around us. We're trying to jab it underneath the frame to get a little bit more leverage. We're digging a hole out from underneath her to try to get her some more room. But she's talking, she's crying. She's a little disoriented, but she's alive. So I'm stuck. Remember, I was trying to pick up. I kind of leaned against the car and I was kind of picking up backwards and using my legs as best I could, but I, I couldn't let go. Anytime I felt I let go, I would crush her. So I had that bystander that was there, grabbed my radio, and it was already on the channel, and requested the fire department and our rescue team to expedite. Yes, I know they're going lights and sirens. I do that all the time. We hear our cops all the time saying, have the EMS expedite. We're doing lights and sirens. So, you know, felt the right thing to do. I asked them, I said, have it ready, have them expedite, and here's what I want. Even though I'm holding this up, I'm thinking, how are we gonna get her out of here? I asked for some airbags or jacks so we can get it underneath there. And the rescue crew that showed up was phenomenal. They weren't very far behind. 
To me, because I was lifting, it felt like hours, but they were only, you know, maybe five, 10 minutes behind us. They set up very, very quickly. I don't think they ended up using airbags, but they did jack the car up enough and we dug it out enough where we pulled her out from underneath the car. Head to toe assessment. Looking at her, she really didn't have any physical injuries. She didn't have an obvious broken arm, obvious broken leg. Her head was intact. There was no gross bleeding after I cut her clothes off to figure out what's going on, but she was having a hard time talking. Her respiratory rate was increasing. Her blood pressure was starting to have an issue. So this is a rapid transport. I immediately got her in the truck and I listened to her lung sounds. Her one lung was full, full of blood. She had a hemothorax that needed to be treated. Well, in the pre-hospital field for us, we can treat regular thorax or tension pneumothorax, but I knew from the crush injury that she's gonna have a hemoneumo. There's not a whole lot I can do. I talked with my other providers to say, okay, are we gonna do CPAP and try to get her to breathe more because her oxygen level continues to drop. She continues to have respiratory rate issues. She continues to have mental change issues because of the hypoxia. So do we do a CPAP? Well, if she does have a pneumo on top of this, I can make it worse by putting her on a CPAP. So I chose not to do that. Do I do a needle decompression and try to relieve it some that way? Well, I could, but if it is just a hemoneumo and not a regular pneumo, it's not gonna do a whole lot either. What she really needed is she needed to get to the ER to have a chest tube placement. So I made a decision at that moment in time really to give supportive medication for pain management to kind of relieve her a little bit. And then I put her on a non-rebreather and I used diesel, that right foot on the gas, and we hauled to the hospital. We got in the trauma bay, and just as we get in the trauma bay, she loses consciousness. Fortunately, they were ready for us. We called the report. They were able to put a chest tube in bilaterally. They got her over to the CT scanner and found out that she had bilateral hemoneumos and wasn't ventilating well at all. Even though she has chest tubes, we now have her intubated. Oh, and that was the other thing. If I intubated early, I could make things worse too. So I was kind of stuck between that rock and a hard place. But anyways, at the trauma center, they got all that accomplished. She actually went into cardiac arrest on the CT scanner. So what they did to save her life, they connected ECMO. And for the next four days, uh, they got her back from the cardiac arrest after they were able to put the ECMO on and, and that kind of thing. I, Again, I'm not part of that hospital scene. I'm not sure what the, the steps were to do that, but they put her on ECMO and she survived. And what was cool about this for me, one, it was one of those ones that make you think, yes, you have a trauma. Yes, you have a hemoneumo. You know what's going on, but this was a full chest crush injury and how I treat that. I chose to go with oxygen. I chose to go with diesel and get her there. And after this call, everything was all said and done. I want to say three to four months later, the local trauma center asked us to come do a lecture for their trauma symposium. We're doing some con ed for everybody. They do this almost every year. And they asked me to come lecture on what I did because they also felt if I ended up tubing her, I could have made it worse. If I ended up putting her on CPAP, I would have made it worse. So, you know, the decisions I made, even though they were kind of BLS, other than the pain medication, were the right decisions to make for this patient. And what was really cool about this lecture is at the end, I wasn't aware about it, but the patient survived and she ended up coming to the lecture itself. So she got to speak and talk about her aspect of what happened and all the trauma. And it was really the first time that the medical staff at the trauma center, the EMS staff that was there, we all got to meet the patient that survived. It's one of those kind of stories that make you feel good, but it's also one of those challenging stories. That's my story for you today. I Hopefully you guys enjoy it. There's a lot more out there you know, throughout the career. We really wanna hear from you guys. So do us a favor, drop a comment below. Let us know what you have. Once again, thank you for watching Heroes Next Door. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, and we'll keep bringing you more episodes.